Hello, this short video is to show you how to use PowerPoint to capture lecture content for your course, turn it into a video, and then get it ultimately closed captioned so it's ADA compliant and ready for your students during the semester. So we're inside of PowerPoint. We've got our slide deck, and in this slide deck I've edited it down. There's, you're going to notice the content is not consistent, but I've edited it down to 12 slides. Chunking is something you do want to consider when you're making a PowerPoint presentation for your students to self-teach, and you're going to convert it to video. If I have 12 slides here and I just do two minutes a piece per slide, that's going to be 24 minutes. That's a long time to have a student sit and watch one video. It's a good idea to keep your video content under five minutes for each video so that the students can watch it, look at that information, put it into their uh, um, foundational understanding of the course, and then move on to the next video. It's not to say that you can't have you know, an hour's worth of video content inside of your course, but it's a good idea to make those videos short and get an idea to the students, maybe do teach a little, test a little kind of a theory here. Um, a student will not generally sit and watch a 30 minute video or a 40 minute video in one setting, so it's a good idea to chunk those and develop those skills into your course. So we're going to look at our video here. So we have a 12 slide deck here. and We're just going to look at the process and tools to create a video. There's some tips and tricks I want to point out to you. So we're inside of our deck. We've created all our videos. We're going to record a slideshow presentation. So if you look at the top menu here, we have home, insert, draw, design, transition, animations. We want to slide over to where it says actually slideshow. And then we have all of the options to start playing our slideshow if we were live pres presenting. And then down here we have record slideshow. If you've used this before and you're familiar with it, PowerPoint and Microsoft added in a new process where you can convert your content to video content. The great thing about this is, is when you're delivering a lecture and content lecture using your PowerPoint slideshow presentation, every time you advance when you record, your voice content, your audio content, stays embedded with that slide. What that simply means is if we're on slide three, for instance, and we're saying step three and providing closed captioning, when we're talking in this slide is what we're narrating over when we're building our content out. As long as this slide is the slide we're embedded on, the audio will stay embedded with that slide when we convert this to video. So you won't have the slideshow advancing and you're talking about something else and there's um, visual content on the screen that your students are getting errant information that you're talking about something else. So let's go ahead and start this process. But when we do, we're going to, you know, we're going to start with our current slide. I want to talk about a couple of things before we go into slideshow mode, because as soon as we hit this button, you're going to see the screen change. And I'm going to point out some things and you are recording as soon as you hit this button. So before we record, we want to make sure we have play narrations, use timings and show media controls are up and, and on our screen are checked. So now we're going to click and I want you to notice how my screen is going to change. So we're clicking record slideshow and now this is the slide here that is being presented. Up here in the top left hand corner is the timer for the entire slideshow and right here over the middle of the slide is the narration timing for the current slide. So right now those two are matched. We have content that we're starting here and we're at 18 seconds and we have 12 slides so I'm talking over this so you're going to want to do your introduction so I would do something like uh, today we're going to do a presentation I have on making a, your course accessible it's titled make a start six steps towards an accessible course my name is Austin Haynes I'm your instructor today and I want to present this information to you notice once again we're matched we're synced up here and so we are going to be able to uh, advance to the next slide and this current slide counter is going to reset so I'm going to advance to the next slide I'm just going to use my arrow key but I could click here and I advance to the next slide so we're talking now on slide two and I want you to notice we are at a minute over here on the left but over the current slide we only have eight seconds here so what I'm going to do as I'm talking to you here is I'm going to record audio on all of the slides so right now I have 15 16 seconds on this slide I'm going to advance to the next slide and now I've got reset the timer and so now we're on step three and I'm talking and I'm adding content to this and because I'm adding content to this I'm able to talk and and bring content on this. Down here in the lower left hand corner you will notice there is a pencil 
and I can look at these tools and I can use these tools here to bring in new uh, content and, and show things. So I'm going to use the laser pointer for instance. So right now I'm using the laser pointer and I'm going to say I want to highlight closed captioning. Or I can come down here and I can say I want to change my tool and I want to use the pin and I can use this to click the options here. And so now I'm going to use the pin and I'm going to circle content on my slide and I'm going to underline things for emphasis and I'm going to write words here so that I can draw the students attention to that and so I want to go ahead and show you these tools here I can come down again and I can reset the tool so I'm just clicking on the tools and I'm going to uh, erase the pin content now and now that's off of my slide all right, so now I'm going to go to the next slide. I'm recording, and now if you notice, we are at two minutes and four seconds, and we're on our current slide. We've only recorded five seconds worth of content. And now I have a slide that has images on it. This is another time where I may want to use my pen tool and be able to, uh, um, to highlight some of the content here. So I'm going to use the uh, pen color. I'm going to change the pen color now to green, and I'm going to circle here and talk about this is where we want number one to be and number two is point is here and this is the audio burn in on this video and things like that then I'm going to advance to the next slide I've still got my pen tool up so anything I start to click on and make advanced ideas on I want to be able to use that I can come down here once again and I can grab the highlighter and I can highlight documents just like our content just like I do whenever I'm using a pin I can come down here and hide this so now it's hidden so now I'm not doing anything on the video and now I'm advancing to the next slide and if you notice I am resetting my time and we are on slide 6 of 12 and so I'm going to go through and I'm going to add content on each of these so if you're talking to your audience be aware that anything you have on here that you've embedded inside of here as far as a hyperlink and we're going to look at that here this blue text here would, would indicate that they can click on this I don't want to uh, think that the students can still click on this inside of a video content which we're going to convert it to so you may want to include a version of your PowerPoint if you have hyperlinks in it that doesn't have audio content embedded on it but is available to the students so that they can click on your hyperlink content so we're advancing through our slides we're once again still embedding audio content on each slide so we're on slide 9 of 12 we're now on slide 10 of 12 and we've embedded audio content on 10 slides and we're coming to the end of our deck and so now we're on slide 11 and we've embedded that audio content and once again I have a hyperlink on there that is not going to work once I convert this content to video format. My, vid my hyperlinks will no longer work but I can include a copy of my PowerPoint inside of my Blackboard course and it will not eat up as much of the data uh, space available to me and I will be able to have my students be able to click on the hyperlink. So my last slide is up now and so now I'm embedding content on there and if you notice for this presentation this has only been four minutes and 20 seconds but we're going to end the show now and that's going to bring us out into this presentation of our slides. So if you look here I've got it's difficult to see here but I've got little audio file emblems in the corners of each of my slide but more importantly I have timing down here so this is telling me that I've got these this amount of content this this much time of audio content embedded on my slide so when we're, we're talking and giving examples of how to use the pointer and things like that we got a little bit more time and of course on our first slide when we were introducing the entire concept but as we got towards the end we didn't have a great deal of time there so I'm gonna go slide back up into my uh, slide view here and I'm going to go to normal view which is the view we I see most people use whenever they're building out their slide deck so you will see now down here in the lower right hand corner the audio content I was talking about and also you will be able to click on and so play the audio slideshow and now this is the slide here that is being presented for what the content is but this is a very short slide audio content and it is it's, it is buried in this slide so I've I've added this here so some tips I want to give you is this uh, you're building out content for your course or so whatever your course is whether it's biology or history or English this is core content for your course this is these are foundational ideas inside of your 
uh, um, subject matter that you want to present. So first thing I would say to you is you're the teacher of the course so you know on each slide if you want to introduce yourself that's fine but really your introduction should take place in a, a, a introduction video that you do at the beginning of the course and if, when you get to each slide don't say on the first slide thank you for taking my course in the summer of 2020 I appreciate it just start talking about your content that way next semester you don't have to rebuild this slide presentation and you don't have to rebuild this content think of this as your uh, support materials for your textbook type teaching so that you're able to use these slides from semester to semester that being said you may get feedback from your student when you first build these and say to yourself boy I wish I would have added more content on for instance this slide here okay so if you want to add more content on that slide there and you say to yourself I did not say the other things that I wanted to say on my slide there's a couple of things you can do if you if all the content that's on there you really like you can simply go over here right click on it and say duplicate slide and then you'll have two versions of it so you have two versions of the slide but on those two versions of the slide if you notice I have two identical audio content so the so the audio has been duplicated also so on slide one I like the content that's on there I don't want to change anything here I just want to add something so when I go up here back up here to slideshow I'm if you notice I'm highlighted I'm on this slide it's got the red band around the slide and I can come up here to record slideshow and if you notice I've got this slide this drop down chevron that little arrow pointing down I can click on that and it has an option that says clear and it says clear timings on current slide and clear narrations on current slide it also has clear timings on all slides and clear narrations on all slide we don't want to do that we just want to clear the timing on the current slide and we want to come back and clear the narration on the current slide and if you notice down here in the lower right hand corner our narration has gone away so now we can start we can record the slideshow and we can record narration just for this slide and add content to this slide and we will be fine so we will play record from this slide here and so now I'm talking over this slide and I'm adding audio content to it so anything I wanted to add to it I'm adding to that right now and I'm adding that to this slide and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to end the slideshow and now if you notice I have two of those slides here and my students when I convert this to a video are not going to see any change when I convert this to a video that slide is just going to be starting to present again and I'm going to go right in there and I've added content to that so that's a little trick to, to it's a really good idea to look at the feedback your students give you about your content whenever you develop it for your course and this will allow you to develop your assets and to grow them along with your students needs if you're getting a lot of questions that you didn't really answer in let's say slide 11 here and you say boy if I just added another minute I wouldn't get all these questions and I think my students would have a lot more clarity on this content then you'll be able to go in and easily easily add that content so I'm gonna go back into view and I'm gonna go back to normal and so here's my slideshow presentation and let's say I'm happy with everything that I've done and I want to convert my slideshow to a video now if you have the updated version of PowerPoint you would have had to have updated this while we were at the campus um, uh, and, and it, it's a newer update but if you have the updated version of, of PowerPoint you can do a couple of things here first and foremost you can just simply save as or save and it's going to give you options to save so it's saving you saving here and I can go to save as and I can change the title of it and I can change the file for format to PowerPoint presentation and so since it's saving this as a PowerPoint slideshow I can say PowerPoint show and I can save that as a PowerPoint show that's the option I want you to pick and that's going to save all of your audio content embedded on this so now I've saved this as a PowerPoint show I could load this up in my Blackboard course but this is a big file and it will bog down and ultimately can crash your course so I don't want you to do that here's what I want you to do if you if you save it as a PowerPoint show I want you to email it to me and I'm gonna make another video to show you how to email it to me and if you can't save it as a video I will save it as a video and I will email you back a link to the video and you will just put the hyperlink for the video in your course if you can save it as a video and want to just send it to me as that you can come up to file 
and you can say export and if you're if you do have this option when you get to here you're, you'll see file format option here and you can save it as an mp4 file that's a video file a move mov is a video file also but it's a big file and it's not one that we're going to be able to uh, import as easily so we're going to save it as an mp4 and so that is going to change it so once i do that i'm going to hit export and my my content is going to start to save as a video file and so i'm going to see right down here at the bottom if you look it says powerpoint is converting uploading a video austin haynes slideshow record example mp4 and you will see a min a menu bar here start to save my PowerPoint presentation you see it's very slow but it's converting my PowerPoint and taking those timings of the audio and the video and timing them and sequencing them up it does take it a little bit of time to do that but I am happy to do that for you once you have converted that you'll have the your original PowerPoint with the audio content embedded on it as a PowerPoint show saved and then right next to it on your desktop or in a folder that you put these in you will have the exact same thing instead of it saying uh, PowerPoint show or PowerPoint it will say uh, mp4 file and so that is how you are going to be able to save your content as a uh, file as a video file and send that to me so I wanted to make this short video to give you that I, those ideas and those quick tips and instruction on how to get this done and so I appreciate you and if you need any help please don't fail to reach out and talk to us at uh, individually in the instructional design department at Tarrant County College thank you and I appreciate your time today